Hello, this is uh, Will Steger here on the Global Warming 101 Expeditions. It's uh, Earth Day on Baffin Island. We're presently on a dog sled expedition with Inuit hunters to document the changes on their Inuit culture and on the surrounding environment. People of Baffin Island are primarily a marine culture and they rely on the sea ice for their subsistence. And global warming in this region is really being played out on the sea ice. As the heat from the greenhouse effect is being absorbed. About 80% of that energy is absorbed into the oceans. Oceans are warming, of course, and we're getting a later freeze up each year. My name is Elizabeth Andre. I'm one of the education coordinators for the Will Steer Global Warming 101 expedition. The goals of our expedition is to come up to the Arctic and witness firsthand the effects of climate change in a place where the climate is changing more rapidly and more dramatically than anywhere else. We want to provide this witness through our interactions with the Inuit culture. We have three Inuit hunters on our team. We're spending a lot of time in different Inuit villages along the way. We want to talk to people who are living on the front lines of climate change, whose lives and ability to make a livelihood and to travel are being impacted by climate change. My name is uh, Theo Ikumak. Uh, if I look at, my, at the youth that we have today, the, their future is quite bleak with, the, with their association with the environment as it is right now. When, when I was growing up, the environment was part of our culture. What I'm finding with the youth is that they won't have the same environment to grow up in. For example, ice might, uh, might be, even be a thing of the past. It, looking at our 10-year-olds, if, if they get to be my age, is the ice going to be there? Maybe not. Are the glaciers going to be here? Maybe not. And with those things, uh, the environment is such that you know, it can be thriving with certain animals. And the way I look at it now, the children that we have today might be, you know, at my age level when everything is so changed that new species of animals are here, all species have moved on somewhere else, or they have been wiped out altogether. So, so looking at that, their way of life will be so different in that Inuit culture will have to be rewritten down the road. Yeah, it's been quite eye-opening coming up here to the Arctic because I look around and it looks like the most pristine environment you can possibly imagine. We're 1,400 miles from the nearest industrial center, but the more I talk with people and the more I read about the area, the more I realize that there are invisible pollutants here that you can't smell, you can't taste, you can't see. There are PCBs, other persistent organic pollutants, heavy metals, things that are coming up to the Arctic on atmospheric currents through ocean currents and being deposited here. Then they bioaccumulate as they go up the trophic levels and the food chain. So they're getting into fish and then the seals eat the fish, the polar bears eat the seals, humans eat the polar bears, humans eat the seals, humans eat the fish. So you get humans at the top of the food chain here who are accumulating these pollutants in their bodies in what should be a pristine environment. When you're traveling through the Arctic by dog team and talking with the cultures, it's very obvious that we have a major problem here with global warming, but there are solutions. Anytime that we turn on a light switch or we make a purchase, we're making a decision. So it's these decisions that we make in our personal life, like changing fluorescent light bulbs, uh, choosing ethanol, for fuel, for cars, uh, energy efficient appliances. All these decisions lead to the reduction of carbon emissions, which is the cause of our global warming problem. Our theory has always been, if you look after the environment, the environment looks after you. Well, what we find about your theory is that you control the environment. You, you take total control of the environment, correct all the problems that are on there. It doesn't work that way. And to us, if you revere the environment as part of yourself, then, you know, you're protecting yourself, not controlling yourself. You're protecting yourself, you're assisting yourself. So therefore, there, there are these two ways of thinking. I cannot say that one is wrong or one is right. I can say they are that way of thinking, that uh, your culture, the Kanduna culture, has always, the way I look at it, they look at conquering
the environment as opposed to living with it. Whereas the Inuit are more in living with the environment, being part of the environment, not conquering or ruling anything on the environment. This is Will here on um, Earth Day uh, 2007. We're on Baffin Island here for the Global Warming 101 Expedition, signing off. Uh, over and out. <laughs>